How's it going guys? It is 2.44 a.m. Wednesday, July 20th here in Japan, and we have a difficult question for both step one and step two, okay? Nearly identical question shows up on internal medicine form seven on the clinical mastery series forms for 2CK. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical, links down below. Find me on Telegram, links to the Telegram group and channel down below. Now start the clip. 24-year-old man, he's got a one-month history of periorbital and pedal swelling. He has no past medical history. BMI is 20. Serum studies show markedly elevated cholesterol and triglycerides. Question just simply wants to know, he's at greatest risk for which of the following? So let's just whip through the answer choices here. Choice A, adrenal crisis, wrong fucking answer. Uh, this is going to be when a patient has a precipitous drop in blood pressure uh, during surgery or in the setting of trauma or an infection uh, on a background of adrenal insufficiency, okay, such as Addison disease, or it can be a patient, and this is higher yield actually, a patient who has a chronically suppressed adrenal gland uh, due to exogenous corticosteroids, okay? So let me just clean this up for you. They're going to give you a patient who has IBD, SLE, uh, RA, who's on prednisone long-term, goes into surgery, and gets a drop blood pressure, 80 on 40. Answer is after fluids, give hydrocortisone. A patient has a suppressed adrenal gland, can't mount a stress response, consumes the endogenous cortisol, and uh, has a drop in blood pressure. Long fucking discussion. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, digital gangrene, wrong answer. Uh, I just threw this in here. Uh, this could be uh, diabetes, okay, obviously uh, the toes, uh, patients at risk for vasculopathy, injures the feet, and then neuropathy, uh, so injures the feet due to neuropathy, can't feel the feet, and then can't heal the lesions because of vasculopathy. It can also be Berger or Berger disease, uh, thromboangiitis obliterans, heavy smoker, male over 50, uh, who has finger gangrene, okay, uh, digital gangrene of the hands, and uh, smoking cessation is the answer, wrong fucking answer. Choice C, peripheral vascular disease, wrong answer. This refers to arterial disease. Long discussion. Uh, they're going to give you a patient who has intermittent claudication classically or just signs of arterial disease, trophic changes, shiny uh, skin with hair loss, arterial ulcers, punched out ulcers distally on the toes slash feet. And they want uh, ankle brachial indices as first line for diagnosis. And then you're going to do a stress test to determine exercise tolerance followed by recommend a walking slash exercise program. Uh, choosing uh, arteriography after ABIs is the wrong fucking answer. Peripheral vascular disease, wrong fucking answer. Choice D, rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis, wrong answer. Uh, this is something you're going to see occasionally with the vasculitides, okay, plural for vasculitis. Uh, which is going to be Wegener, granulomatosis with polyangiitis, or Churg-Strauss, eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangiitis, microscopic polyangiitis. You can even see it with good pasture. And so if a patient with one of the aforementioned conditions uh, gets rapidly deteriorating renal function, that's RPGN. You get fibrin crescents, okay? Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, superficial thermophobitis is the correct answer. So this patient has nephrotic syndrome, okay? The etiology of the nephrotic syndrome is not important. It could be minimal change disease, we don't know. I mean, it's an adult, minimal change disease, classically kids, yes. It doesn't matter. The point is, we've got edema, periorbital edema especially, okay? This is what points toward nephrotic syndrome. It's rare, like if you had heart failure, just as an example, if you had heart failure, liver failure, it's not typical that you get periorbital edema, okay? Something you tend to see in nephrotic syndrome. And then we've got the dyslipidemia here, okay? So the liver is going to pump out apolipoproteins to compensate for the low serum albumin that we're losing in the urine. And so part of the proteins that we're losing in the urine in nephrotic syndrome is antithrombin-3, okay? So nephrotic syndrome is an important cause of antithrombin-3 deficiency, which increases the risk of thromboses. So the question on internal medicine form seven, as I prefaced with, the answer is actually DVT, not superficial thrombophobitis, but this is just the same thing as a DVT occurring in a superficial vein. Okay, so you need to know renal vein thrombosis, uh, DVT, superficial thrombophobitis. They'll describe this as a painful 
one centimeter palpable cord at the ankle that may or may not track up to the knee, and you're going to do subcutaneous anoxaparin as the answer, uh, compression stockings is the wrong answer, even though that answer, compression stockings, is very frequently correct on 2CK forms, all right? You know the deal until you make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.